Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create these sketchy carrots using watercolor and watercolor pencils and then create a garland out of your work. You can do this with tons of different shapes. I went springy with carrots and I was trying to get the camera to focus on the carrots. Let's start with materials. I used Canson watercolor paper because even though it's not as high quality as some other kinds, I like the blotchiness for this project. I'm also going to be using Daler Rowney watercolor paints. Use whatever paints that you prefer. We're going to be using lots of red, oranges, yellows, greens. I'm also using my watercolor pencils by Lyra and you can use watercolor pencils or regular colored pencils. And then any round brush, I'm using my Polina Bright round brush. So pick out some colored pencils that are in the yellow, orange, red variety, as well as your bright greens, mid-tone greens, and your darker bluish greens. First, let's talk about why I'm using watercolor pencils and what they are. Watercolor pencils act just like regular colored pencils, except they react to water. So I can put the sketch down with my watercolor pencils and then put clean water on top and it will add color without me needing to add any paint. In this situation, I like to use it to sketch so that when I do add my watercolor, it kind of all blends in. So I will be using color on top of my watercolor pencils, but I think this entire process will still work with regular colored pencils because we want it to look really sketchy. So I wouldn't mind the lines at all. I started by getting the general shape of my carrots with a lighter yellow orange and I really had fun with the shapes. Some are wider, some are longer. Um, they definitely have their bumps and lumps and their unique personalities. And then I'm picking up a darker orange and I'm going to start adding more of a heavier outline and some shading on the left side. So this is also going to help me when I'm adding my watercolor to remember to keep the highlights on the right side. And I really, again, like the sketchiness of this project. They're not supposed to look perfect. They're supposed to look blotchy and uneven and kind of um, that textured illustrated feel. So I'm really going through pretty quickly with this outline and I'm not really caring if it doesn't necessarily match the first outline that I did. Now that I've got the outline of the carrots finished, I am going to go in with my watercolor. I'm starting with my lightest color first, which is my bright yellow, then going in with my more medium toned yellow orange color. And I'm painting it only on the left side because the right side is where I have my highlight. So I'm rinsing my brush off and with water, I am painting the right side, touching down on the paint on the left side so that the colors can blend over, but the right side stays lighter so that we can maintain a highlight. Then I'm going to go in while it's still wet and add my punchy, bright, reddish orange color again on that left side. A feature of this Canson paper is that it doesn't settle down into the fibers of the paper because it's not 100% cotton, which is why I don't typically use it. It's frustrating. I recommend everyone who's a beginner to try to move away from this type of paper as fast as possible because you will be so much happier when your paintings do what you want them to do. That being said, with this type of painting where we want it to be blotchy, we want it to be sketchy, we want it to be uneven and have this really unique illustrated feel, this was the type of paper I thought about. It feels like cardstock for watercolor to give me the best blotchy layers. <laughs> So that's why I'm using Canson and I have to work pretty quickly with the watercolor because it dries really fast with this type of paper. I'm putting in some of the textured lines of the carrot with the different colors while everything is still wet because I kind of want some lines that are a little bit blurred and it's okay that it looks weird. It's okay that it looks patchy. The beauty of this concept and design is that we're kind of blocking out color, blocking in shapes and highlights and shadows and maybe a little bit of the lines from 
like the carrot detail. But then we get to go in with our colored pencils or watercolor pencils and really fine tune the details and it will just look really cool all the different layers. You'll see the light colors, the highlights, the shadowed blotchy watercolor layers, but then you'll see the different layers of the watercolor pencil or colored pencil that we will add on top creating a final image that you'll really like. My biggest tips as you're painting with this style is to maintain a highlight, even if it feels weird and blotchy, everything looks good cut out. Every little watercolor sketch that you have looks better cut out. If you have a watercolor sketch on your desk right now that you hate, try cutting it out and putting it somewhere. It will look a hundred times cuter automatically for some reason. Just trust the process. Let it be blotchy. Put random blotches places that you think it's you're not sure that it looks good. Just maintain a highlight, have a shadowed area, have some blurry fuzzy details, let it dry, we'll sketch over it, it's going to look amazing. One thing you'll probably notice through the sped up process is that as everything is drying on the carrots to the left, I start adding more layers onto those carrots. So as I'm painting one carrot on the right side, I also will go through and add a couple more patches of color to all of the other carrots just to make everything look really patchy and blotchy before we add colored pencil. So if it looks a little bit flat, add another layer of orange, yellow, or even the darker reddish orange on top. Now we are going to move on to the green bits on the top of the carrot. Now I know in reality the greenery can be a lot longer, can be shorter for sure, but this is more of an illustrated fun version of greenery. <laughs> so these tops are funny. They're funky. I kind of leaned into that more whimsical situation with the tops of these carrots because I felt like I didn't have enough room, but I also didn't want them to be too long because on a garland that would be kind of weird. So I wanted them to be stocky and funny and funny shaped. So again, I'm just sketching out the shape with a lighter colored pencil, watercolor pencil, and then I'm going to go in and add the watercolor in a little bit. The same watercolor rules are going to apply here to the greenery. We're going to start with our brightest, like neon yellow green color, add in some of our mid-tone greens, add in some darker blue greens, and let it be blotchy. Add some water in for some more blotchy effect, and let it be. So just add the color, let it be wonky and blotchy, and then we'll kind of fix everything up or make it look better with the watercolor pencil. Also something I wanted to address was it was a beautiful day. The sun was out and then as I was painting and creating this project, it gets darker and cloudier and I lose all of my light. So it does get a little bit dim, but then the sun comes back out and I did my best <laughs> to correct it. It was a beautiful day and I am going to share with you later some of the rain sounds because that's like the dream painting with the window open and it's raining outside. At least in Arizona, that's the dream. <laughs> Now 
Now we get to one of my favorite parts of this project, which is sketching over the top. Now I don't need to do this with watercolor pencil because I'm not adding water at this point, but I'm just what I had out. So again, you can do this however you want to. You could really even create this effect with watercolor. If you had a lot of patience and a really tiny brush, you could create that sketchy look with watercolor, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, pastels, crayons. There's just so many endless choices for this type of project. So I'm using my watercolor pencil, outlining everything. I'm getting really sketchy and loose. So I always say, now I've got a base of watercolor. Once I have the base color, I can pretty much do anything within that base and it won't look bad. So I'm just sketching around with lots of different colors of orange, yellow, especially on the edges, adding a little bit of yellow makes everything really pop, kind of like there's sunlight on my carrot. And then I even go in with a really dark red and add some deep shadow colors. One of my goals with this layer is to see the pencil lines. So if there's a section where there's not enough pencil lines, I will go in and see if maybe I even just need a yellow, bright yellow pencil line in one of the highlighted areas. But typically adding this dark detail with the shadows, this super red color, adding in some of the detailed lines of the carrot, really makes everything come together and you can see the difference between that carrot that I've done and the ones on the left that fall a little bit flat everything starts to pull together and make more sense with this added layer I think this is one of my favorite parts of the project because it is the most freeing you don't have to make it look perfect it's supposed to look sketchy and kind of the sketchier the better the more wild and out of the lines and kind of weird colors you put together, the better. So just maintain your highlight, focus some of those sketch lines in the shadows, but don't be afraid to be a little wild, creative, experiment with this idea. Now we're going to work on the sketchy part of the greenery and this is where I'm going to play you some of the beautiful rain sounds <laughs> that were happening in my home. My toddler fell asleep on the floor next to me. It was raining and I was painting with the window open. It was just, it was a beautiful moment. I wanted to share that with you. And again, I felt very free in that moment with this type of project. So I hope you have that moment, whatever that looks like for you where you feel at peace, you feel free to create. And with the greenery, sketching it out, I'm doing the same thing. I'm outlining, I'm using random colors, I'm making it really sketchy. I filled in some of the gaps between the little fingers. <laughs> some of these greenery tops looked like fingers. So I made them look less fingery and more fluffy, which is closer to what a carrot looks like anyway. And I used a really dark bluish green for the shadow color on the greenery. And I really like the deep contrast that this color brings, especially compared to the really bright greens and the yellows that we're seeing in the greenery.
And with that, the sketching part is done and the sun came back out. <laughs> so now we have our bright sun back again and it is time to cut our carrots out. I like to do this very imperfectly. I like to leave a bit of white space in some places, maybe not in other places. Just kind of a rough cutout. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of like the entire sketching painting process was rough. So the cutting needs to be a little rough too. kind of matches it. So cut your entire carrot out and set it aside. And if you had any doubts about the carrots up until this point, I, I'm telling you, once you see a little watercolor painting cut out, it completely changes your perspective on the painting. Like this carrot was okay on the paper. But oh my gosh, it's so dang cute. Cut out. What is that? I don't know. There's just a magic around cutting things out. So continue to cut out all of your carrots. I think I grabbed kitchen scissors. My husband hates when I do that. So just don't tell him. And admire all of your beautiful carrots and how cute they look together cut out. If you're turning yours into a garland, you will need a needle and some really thin string. I am using the edge of my scissors to tap a kind of impression into my carrot with the needle and then I'm using my needle to kind of pre pre drill the hole my husband works in construction so we're pre drilling the hole <laughs> um, so we're just tapping the needle to make an indentation pulling the needle through this is before we even have thread on our needle we're going to do that to all of our carrots I'm keeping it close to the base of where the greenery and the carrot meets without going too close to the edge. And this is why I didn't wanna make the greenery too long. They're gonna bump into each other, it's going to be weird. So now all of my carrots are pre-drilled <laughs> and I am lining them up to see which direction I want them to go. And then I have my hemp cord. Um, it's just really thin string that I have that I like to use for crafting projects. It fits perfectly in my needle. And the key with this type of garland is you are going to go in through the first hole from the top so that the connection point is in the back of your garland if that makes sense so you're going to go in through the first hole and then come out through the second hole and then that way you have minimal string showing on the carrot the carrot just looks perfect like the carrot takes a little bit of work to pull some of these strings through because i did not create the biggest hole you could use a hole punch if you wanted to but i feel like my carrots are too small for a significant hole punch if you have a tiny hole punch, that would be ideal. Give yourself enough slack in the string so that you can make it as long as you need to and space the carrots out as far as you want them apart once you get them all strung up onto the garland. So string them all up and then you can worry about getting the placement just right once they're all together. And then the hardest part is going to be figuring out where you are going to hang this in your house because it's just so cute. I can imagine this for spring, for Easter, you could have this um, at an Easter party, at school. It's just, it's the perfect little decoration for spring. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. I enjoyed showing you my sketchy illustration process and hanging it all up as a garland, and I will see you next time. Bye.